Chatfield State Park is one of the most profitable and highly visited parks in Colorado. Chatfield is home to countless species of birds and wildlife, including federally protected animals critical to nature's equilibrium. It is also a haven for millions of visitors each year. Well, I like fishing and looking for animals. Yeah, we caught a walleye this June. It was a little one. Yeah, it was a walleye. That's, that wasn't a good accomplishment. These same visitors generate over $1.9 million in revenue and spend an additional $40 million at nearby businesses. Driving along the road, the mountains are bigger than what we've got at home, so that was pretty cool. But starting in 2014, the Chatfield Reservoir Reallocation Project will move ahead, and 700 acres of this unique landscape will be destroyed. The project began over a decade ago, when 15 Denver water providers asked the Army Corps of Engineers to change the way water was stored in federally owned Chatfield Reservoir. This was built for flood protection. They had to do a big study to see if they would have room for 20,600 acre feet of storage water that was not storm water. Their well-intended goal was to provide water for the Denver metro area in the year 2050. We were concerned because there's already silt in the bottom from when they originally built it. So they did a siltation study and they said, oh, we're okay. But the peer review study came up with another problem that they didn't show what the siltation would be going forward. How much is that going to take up? What is the impact of that? on their 20,600 acre feet. Disregarding peer reviews and less damaging alternatives, the Army Corps of Engineers concluded in their environmental impact study that the cheapest and easiest option was still to create storage space behind the dam for the desired 12 feet of water. Not 12 feet laterally, but literally 12 vertical feet, so the spread out is going to be uh, quite impactful to a lot of the habitats that are right around not only the lake, but up the Platte River, up the Plum Creek drainage, the Deer Creek drainage. The water providers on the project will only be allowed to store extra water in the reservoir three out of every 10 years, causing water levels to fluctuate dramatically. They've estimated the fluctuation will be anything from four to 28 feet. Vertically. Vertically. Wow. Very few years will actually be there, so most of the time they'll have extensive mud flats. Because mm -hmm. the water will be about where it is. Reservoirs that fluctuate wildly, the fish end up with a lot more mercury. In fact, of the reservoirs that were shown to the Wildlife Commission, there were a couple of reservoirs where there were a lot of fish that they, when they sampled them, that were over the public health limit. Denver Water and other priority users downstream have senior water rights, so the 12 vertical feet will have to be released from the dam after only three years. When it recedes, you'll have a bunch of mud flats. you'll get a bunch of invasive weeds. Uh, that's primary for cottonwoods to grow. Cottonwoods, in a matter of uh, six or seven years, will reach the height of maybe 15, 18 feet. Seven years later, it'll flood again. Now it'll kill those cottonwoods. Are they just going to leave all these dead cottonwoods? And, it'll, and that cycle will keep going on and on and on. Here they have a sign that this is habitat for the Preble's Mouse, which is threatened, and so they're asking people to stay out of this area, and all this area will be destroyed if the project goes through. Ground nesting birds, they'll, they'll nest when they can, once the habitat starts to get back to normal, but by then, that's when the next flood incursion happens, and now you again just eliminated all that habitat debris, where are those birds gonna go? Now, a lot of these wild birds only live for three to five years, so if, if, if the habitat's suboptimal, it's either in flood stage or it just came out of flood stage. There's no habitat to breed. Those birds are going to die without ever passing on their genes. Uh, that's a terrible loss. The Army Corps of Engineers does plan to mitigate for the project's inevitable and widespread destruction, but many environmental experts have their doubts. Pretty much every tree you see out here right now would disappear. The cost of this project is mitigation because the impacts are so enormous both to the recreation facilities and environmental and a, there are very few firm commitments in the mitigation plan. A lot of it is based on adaptive management. So it doesn't really replace the values in the, of what the, this forest and the riparian areas provide for people such as myself and Alex. And in terms of relying on the core, 
uh, right across the way. At the Denver Botanic Gardens, there are some wetlands that were supposed to have been built to mitigate for C-470. So and we brought it up at at least five meetings. Okay, guys, how can we trust that you're gonna do the mitigation for the wetlands when on, on core property? That's core property over there. They haven't gotten the water rights from CDOT for 23 years. And they're talking about 150 acres of wetlands that they'll be right. impacting here versus 18. 18. Well, there's not a lot of extensive riparian habitat like this along the Front Range. There's what, What's here is here. It's not like we're creating new, new rivers coming out of the mountains. It, it doesn't happen that way. So there's a promise to acquire and then there's a promise to enhance. We don't know if they can get the land. We don't know if they can get the water. So the whole mitigation plan in terms of the environment anyway mm -hmm. that we're looking at is highly speculative and, and very uncertain. Yeah. The Army Corps of Engineers proposal is built on the knowledge that the water they want to store will most likely never be available due to climate change and long-standing drought. Buried deep in their own 3,000-page report, the Corps admits that this project has little chance of ever providing water to meet future needs. In a technical appendix BB, which nobody in their right mind would ever look at in documents this thick, is a statement by the Corps of Engineers that they concluded the dependable yield of this project is zero. And they're saying what you can depend on in a crunch is zero. <laughs> And it's, again, it's a hope. There's no guarantee there's going to be water in, in the next 20 years. But let's just destroy the habitat anyway. I mean, it, it doesn't seem to make sense, especially when there's alternatives uh, for the water storage instead of Chatfield. I think what the problem is that they have paid the money to do these plans that they have now, and they don't want to rewrite or take the time to look at other alternatives that have come up along the way in addition to that reservoir just south of the park here that has become available. Fully aware of the project's severe consequences, insufficient mitigation, and zero dependability, the Army Corps of Engineers and remaining water providers still plan to go ahead with the $184 million project in 2014. One of my fears is that between ignorance and apathy, there's not going to be a lot of public opposition because people have no idea what's going on. Right. But when, when they see all these cottonwoods being torn down, then all shit, it's too late. All, all hell will break loose. Yeah. Without a public outcry, over 700 acres of forests, wetlands, ponds, grasslands, recreational trails, and shoreline will be lost to accommodate water that may never come. Running out of time. There's a limited amount of time left to, for, the, for the public to comment, to, to have their voice heard. One, one person with a lot of power can do so much, but a lot of people with a little power could do even more. And that's really all it takes, have your voice heard. The clock is running out for Chatfield State Park. To find out how you can help save one of Colorado's most beloved parks, please go to www.savechatfield.org.